Hello and welcome to another episode of our Midday Mentors program. Has it been a while, uh, but I'm more happy to have as my guest today, Brittany Smith from the Human Centered Agility. She's the founder and the director, and not too long ago, <clears throat> moved from Florida to the Netherlands, where she's now based, um, <clears throat> as I'm also based in the Netherlands. So welcome. And we thank keep this conversation in English, I suppose. <laughs> Hello, Brittany. Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me. Your company, Human Centered Agility, has something in there, which is the human aspect of change. Now, give us some 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 insights here. Why is that important for you? Yes, thank you so much for that. Um, the human aspect of change is important because we can um, create, develop various technologies, various processes. We can create various uh, methodologies, but at the end of the day, those are not going to work unless you have the human aspect of you know, adopting that new product or that new process or that new framework. If you don't have the human aspect baked, embedded into um, implementing those, those, those new offerings, it's going to be very challenging to not only measure the success of those processes or frameworks or whatnot, but also it's going to be challenging to gauge if it's working or not. Um, and it's going to impact the success of what you're trying to ultimately achieve. So having the 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 human aspect of change embedded into these these offerings is going to be critical. Um, so if uh, let's say I'm a geek, yeah, and I'm just following process and ticking boxes and say I've done this and change and then that I fulfilled all the requirements for leadership and all that. That wouldn't help me, right? So your point is, uh, I need the human aspect. Now, if I turn that around, if I'm only doing the intimacy, empathy part without that, would that work as well? No, I think there has to be the uh, a combination of both. You, when implementing, let's just use technology for example. Um, you need to ensure that the technology is is working, but in addition to that, that um, it's serving the needs of the the person that's actually using that technology. So there's change that happens on both sides from a technology or process perspective, and then there's the change that happens on the human side. And I like to say that humans like change. We actually do. We just don't like to be changed. There's a there's a difference there. Ah, um, okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true, true. I don't want to be changed. I want to change, right? So I want, but yeah, I I agree. I agree. I think that is that's very important. So to change a technology or to change a process, that's the easy thing. You can do this on paper, but uh, getting people not just to buy in, but to make that change their change isn't that the point so it has exactly. to be like otherwise it's not invented here and then exactly. it won't work yes exactly you can change a process overnight but as people we don't we don't evolve that way we evolve over time um so ensuring that we have techniques and you know um this right skills in place in order to be able to support people along that change is important now without uh, really challenging you but if we walk that talk Brett, um do you have an example ready where you can say this is why it made such a difference oh absolutely um i was working this is probably my favorite cinderella story i was um uh, throughout my career i've always been handed um the teams that are not doing well and, and then was told hey fix this um and i started working with a team at uh, a, a company energy company they were adopting new ways of working agile to be specific and this was exciting you know they uh, we're going to work as a scrum team and we're going to follow this framework we're going to work with this you know we're going to have stand ups it's going to be great Hey, human, I want you to go do this. Well, what happened uh, was the the teams were not used to working in this new way. They were used to um, traditional uh, ways of working um, and, and not just traditional in a sense that, oh, we have a project plan, but then also uh, working in silos. So I'm done with my part. Here you go. See you later. 
Um, and it was my responsibility to help this team come on board with the new ways of working. And so there was, I was met with a lot of resistance uh, naturally, because again, we we don't say, oh, we're going to change and just do this automatically. It takes time. Humans are creatures of habits. Um, and so it, it took time working with this team and negotiating, um, but also uh, meeting them where they were and helping it support them alongside the change. Um, and ultimately, they came from the team that no one wanted to work with to the team that was, they were just, they became an extraordinary team. Um, and I'm pretty sure if they if they're listening to this, they know who they are. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, an example that really resonates with me because they were uh, definitely resistant. Um, but overall, not only did they become a high performing team, but you had uh, the stakeholders that were rooting for them um, and just giving them high praises. So yeah, mm-hmm. you recently joined our community of uh, change management training organizations and given the experience you already have there must be a reason why you've done that why are you using that in particular the new version of the change management qualification can you give us some insights well over time uh, and i've worked with many organizations that were adopting agile and one of the common denominators in these organizations was that they wanted to adopt this new way of working, but they did not create space for people to be able to um, accept this new way of working, to be able to um, make the necessary adjustments, whether if it's professionally or even like personally, to be able to think in this new way. And so um, it, it dawned on me that there was no um, like the there was a lack of change management within adopting agile, and they would spend all this time adopting, uh, you know, planning these, you know, massive frameworks such as scaled agile, um, because there's a lot involved there. But there was no, there was nothing within the process that prepared the people for change to be able to assess. Are we ready for this change? And as we adopt this change, how do we how do we measure the success of the change? Um, so I, I noticed this was um, a common denominator and a lot of reasons why their transformations were not successful. And that led me to really honing in on change management, what it is, and um, how we can use it to improve the success of our transformations. I can see that. I mean, there is a lot of critics these days that uh, the Agile hype is over and uh, it didn't work. But I think the truth is exactly what you said. Um, it's it's just not adopting it right or giving this space. If um, if a, if a stand, daily stand-up yeah, <clears throat> suddenly becomes just an ordinary meeting when orders are given, um, then the, the character, the idea of this fundamental part of an agile process but if that's just using old-fashioned meeting uh, methodologies for a daily stand-up then it's the adoption that failed and not the idea itself exactly uh, you, you okay you agree on that one yeah, yeah it's just exactly. a thought that i had yeah this, no uh, I, exactly um you're you're spawn on and even um the way that requirements are managed where we don't necessarily develop the entire requirements up front we don't we will not spend months developing requirements but we will develop requirements continuously as we go and a lot of times for especially for stakeholders and not being involved in that change um it's it's a bit it can be a bit jarring to them to wait you're telling me i don't have the entire plan and every single detail even something <laughs> like that is it's you have to prepare people for that because you are essentially changing the way that they think and how they communicate and and collaborate with each other yeah well and and that's why i think where where we there's so many aspects of life where we need a structured approach for change management without without losing the human aspect exactly of it and both takes time right exactly 
I know, um, Brett, that you have um, have training courses offering for those people who want to learn, like you, how to do that, actually, how to either from a team perspective or from a leadership perspective or even from a stakeholder per perspective, how to properly do change management. In the video description, we will provide a link where people can see that you have Training's coming up in, in, in well, this November, actually, yes. um, where, where people can take a foundation and a practitioner course, which you would agree enables them quite a lot to Absolutely. approach these things in a better way. Yeah, well, is there any advice you would give to people who are in a situation where they might feel that proper change management is what's missing to achieve things. This can be digital transformation or whatever they're on. Is there any good advice you would give to people? Uh, yes, that's a great, that's a great question. Actually. I, I think it's just a, my advice would be just to remind, you know, everyone that change does not happen overnight with, with people like it does with processes. It does take time. And if you want a transformation or if you want a project of whatever you're trying to achieve, if you really want to capitalize on the benefits um, of that particular uh, transformation or project, it's important to take into consideration we need to prepare people for this change. It could be something, a uh, change that has a little impact or a change that can impact the entire organization. If you really want to capitalize on those benefits, it's important to incorporate uh, change management into um, your initiative. And so in change, there's really not a one size fits all because not every project is the same. And so being able to have people who are part of the team who have that expertise is going to be critical. And as we continue to evolve from a technological perspective, it's going to be important for um, people to or leaders to to ensure that they have uh, the right skill sets on the team to be able to adopt and make sure that their initiatives are successful. All right. Many thanks, Britt. And good luck for the rest of the year with all your change management projects. And hopefully somebody would love to get on your training and learn from you. Many thanks for the conversation today. Yes, thank you so much, Stefan. And uh, those courses are coming up in November. And uh, also I do uh, facilitate an expanded cohort that will be coming up in January as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.